Hello, YouTube gamers. Today I'm going to be doing more of a, um, a more out of character, uh, non live commentary. I'm editing this with this nice microphone in front of my face that I'm not used to having. And I'm just going to do a little bit of talking over some gameplay. This is with Bad Juju on Stormcaller, I think, and Last Man Standing with a pretty solid roll. I don't really think I pull heavy in this one at all. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the recent Guardian Con trip with the other Encore dudes. I'm going to talk about the PvP and how I feel about it right now, and uh, my thoughts about Shadowkeep and my anticipation of that. I'm probably going to break it down to like talking about four minutes of each, so not too much to cover, but feel free to ask stuff in the comments or the Discord or in the streams or whatever. So... Uh, the Guardian Con trip was very recently. Uh, it's renamed to GCX for next year. Something that I could recommend. It's got, it's got a lot for everyone. Uh, pretty quote unquote normie friendly, I would say. It's not like super hardcore, edgy Destiny kit things. You know, they've got Borderlands. And I think they had Sea of Thieves this year. It was pretty awesome. But it's a really good excuse just to go and meet up with people if that's what you so desire. And I'm going to mute the game audio so I can hear myself talk and focus. Uh, so, the core Enemy group of Encore that went this year was um, me, Cammy Cakes, Drewski, and Bakken Gangster was there. Nervous was there. Uh, just a lot of friends. EK was there. And it's just a really good excuse to go hang out and chill and meet up with people. Fans, friends, new people alike. Uh, it takes place in a resort this year, and next year I think it's also in the same resort. Uh, they had all kinds of things. You know, you could meet Bungie developers or staff. You know, I think they had the person who does the voice of Eris Morn this year. It was, uh, it, was, it was really exciting. I didn't really get to meet her, but I got to meet some of the Bungie guys, and they're real humble people. And if playing Destiny is more your kind of thing, they have like a PvP booth. In this year, if you played, won, or lost, you got this little medallion necklace thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, but there's the alternative of risking it, and you could get a cool little pin I have here. Maybe I'll put a picture up in post-editing of it. Uh, if you won the risk match, if you lost, you lost your pendant and had to go back to the line. But you could like go through the free play match like you want to get like 50 pendants if you so desired. Likewise, with the risk match, you could go and risk 50 pendants and get 50 emblem or pins if you wanted. Um, if you just play it in general, you got an emblem. It is called the Moon Stirs. I have the card right here. Yeah, it's called the Moon Stirs. It looks pretty cool. It's not in the game yet. I can wait for Shadow Keep, but yeah, uh, it's just if you're underage, it's still a lot of fun. But for those of us who are of age in the United States, uh, it's just a it's a really, really good excuse to fly in, to give yourself a vacation, especially as a content creator, since some of us don't know when to quit, uh, namely Cammy Cakes. Or like give ourselves a break and just meet up with the boys and have a drink. It's a lot of fun. That's about all I can say about it. Um, like I said, I'm not going to cover too too deeply into this. That was a nice shotgun flick there. So going into the state of PvP, I initially... This recording of this match was part of a two-parter where I was just going to stay in the lobby and switch to last word in a, in a sniper and see how I did in contrast to something that would be considered a little more off-meta, which is your 450 rapid fire, I think that is. No, lightweight pulses, uh, which is what Bad Juju is, and a shotgun. You know, shotgun's considerable meta, but the 450 lightweight pulses, sorry if I'm wrong, uh, like the Nightshade, like Bad Juju, they're kind of pushed out of the top of the meta. They're more on like the B tier, not in the S tier or double S tier or anything like that. And I just wanted to see, you know, I I've been uh, facing a dilemma of I feel like that I'm not getting worse by any means. Uh, I think yes, I'm getting a little lazy because I'm getting tired of the same thing over and over again, but I feel like there's a lot more accessibility here. Uh, players are able to succeed easier without having a, st a, like a decent structure of core fundamentals versus how it would have in the last years. Um, you know, and even in Destiny 1 is what I was told is you could have really good core fundamentals and just dominate a match. Whereas in this game, I feel like if you have a good last word on PC, uh, and by good, I mean you can point in the general direction of an enemy, you have like pretty high success rate. 
and it's just a little annoying. Uh, but I'm getting back into it off of a hiatus, so I don't reserve any right to John or make excuses or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just gaming and trying to stream and all that stuff. Uh, thinking about going into this 3v3 Destiny 2 Arenas tournament or something like that, just to, just to see how we do with me, Drewski, and Candy Cakes. But, we'll, I mean, we'll find out here in a little bit. Um, I think it's this weekend. This is the... Uh, 11th of June 2019 for reference if you're watching this in two years or something if I'm relevant then and yeah I just I, I struggle to have fun because I feel like people with really poor core fundamentals and they just get success due to the randomness of the game but I'm not gonna John I'm not gonna take away from those people I feel like there is a way in the forest to have uh, a very very high success rate or whatever like even in this match, playing it, I felt like I just wasn't having much success at all, and that was it was a little frustrating. Uh, the in-game stats tend to uh, tell a different story, but it's just I feel like I could have went so much harder if things were a lot more certain in uh in my favor. But I guess that's the nature of Destiny, you know. Things are supposed to be chaotic and random. Only five minutes and, left. you know, not entirely based around skill. If I wanted that, I'd probably just go play some Counter-Strike or something like that. But, um, so on another war. topic, uh, talking about the 3v3 tournament, which was 4v4, this, whatever, whatever it is, I don't know what it's going to end up on. Yeah, it's got a pretty goofy rule set, and the rule set follows pretty in line with the standard, like, quote-unquote, sweat, or um, what you would call the competitive rule set. I guess. I'm not really sure what they call that anymore. Uh, I disagree with a lot of them, but I do... I, I respect it because it does tend, like, attempt to mitigate bullshit, but it also mitigates bullshit that they call bullshit, and I think the, the phrase was coined as knee-jerk bans, or like knee-jerk reaction bans. Uh, things like banning 72 RPM snipers because you can clean up with a body shot, which goes against the entire nature of uh, this style of FPS game where, you know, you're supposed to be able to clean up kills, and it's a nice little slayer there. I don't know how I picked that up at all. I was like, holy crap. And going back to the point, knee-jerk reactions and banning things, like anything above 5 resilience, which was... I really, really don't like that concept. I understand they try to keep it very rigid, and it's like, oh, everything can 3-tap, etc., but... I do believe that in the RPG aspect of Destiny, there are counters, and counters should be allowed to be utilized. But this isn't my field. These are the same people who have been playing this for five plus years. I don't really uh, reserve a right to have a say in these type of things. So we're going to play and see how it goes, I guess, possibly. So moving on to the Shadow Keep topics. Um, I'm pretty thrilled for it. Uh, I'm really, really actually excited just from the reveal video that they showed with the uh, what appeared to be an artifact, the artifacts from D1 or something like that, but they kept saying this phrase monster killing machine or something like that, and it just looked like you know, almost like a talent tree, if you will. Uh, I know that talent trees are most closely regarded as your subclass tree. Because that's what inherently they are, but it looked more like a talent tree than anything, and it was very reminiscent of the D1 subclass system, where you had your thing and you could just pick from a set of columns, and it was very expansive, and you could build your own class pretty much, and it was pretty awesome. Um, they mentioned that they were going to be going more into the RPG aspect, or for the first time they call it an MMO, Massively Multiplayer Online XSX. Um, and I'm actually really thrilled for that, because uh, my roots, other than FPS games, are very deeply seated in MMORPGs like RuneScape and WoW. Uh, I was a competitive raider in WoW, and what that means is like I went into worlds first, and you know, like uh, raid races, etc. Which is kind of, and a lot of people kind of are they're taken back by like, how come you don't do raid races in Destiny? It's because we have Encore, and Encore already has a set group, and I'm not going to be the guy who's like, oh, let me in, even if I may be the one. You know, Don't like Neo or something like that. Um, I still have to adhere to structures and and fairness. You know, I don't want to be that guy who's like on some bullshit and be like, oh no, let me, I'm better than this guy. Fucking chase clock. Um, anyway. Shadow Keep, really thrilled for it. Can't wait for it because, and we're going back to these RPG quote unquote roots or whatever. And just from what they've teased, I know they haven't teased much, uh, much but. 
really thrilled again. I can't say it enough. Like I just, I can't even form the words. What I'm uh, excited about is the moon. The moon was my favorite place in D1, even though it wasn't the most exciting. It definitely was like, I, I don't know how to put it. It was like the most intriguing for me. You know, there's not a lot there, but it was just this really, really cool environment from the like the base storyline and. One minute left. I just liked zone it a lot. You have zone well, on top of that, uh, I believe we're supposed to be getting a PvP zone season, or I would expect to be getting a PvP season. Uh, we didn't really get one in Forsaken slash year two, which was a little disappointing and is very demotivating for all of us. All of us, if you consider me a content creator, us PvP content creators, or just players in general, you know, it really made it hard to be a committed fan, uh, especially if you only play for PvP. Nice little Arc Strider shut out there. Zone B capture. You and I mean, have advantage. yeah, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about here, so. Shadow Keep looks awesome. Forsaken year two was a stellar year, if not for me, uh, hopefully for you guys. I took a few breaks here and there, played through most of it though, I didn't really take a very extended break. Uh, this was the downfall of PvP for me, but I'm hopeful for Shadow Keep, and I really do believe that it's going to be going in the correct direction at some point here in the future. And my computers went to sleep there, so hopefully the recording didn't bug out. You're a wall um, this is really all I have zone. to say. Um, this little 47 3.92. I did better on land with the controller, but you know the game's also a lot harder on console. I'll uh, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. If you watched.